We reach out. It is who we are. It is what we do. We reach out to Jubilee and Jerusalem, to New Orleans and Rosebud, and we reach out to Honduras. Honduras is full of beautiful people. Uh, the people is full with faith, you know, and, and hope. And we have a translator named uh, Otto Neil. He goes by Otto. Wonderful smile, wonderful attitude. He's actually a Mormon, and he translates from Spanish to English, English to Spanish. He's so helpful, but you can tell that he's a, a, has incredible character and incredible faith, and um, he's been wonderful to work with. This is the story of Honduras Threads, a mission that touches six Honduran villages. Through the creation of co-ops, these women are building a business, sewing decorative pillows and table runners. The business is helping to lift their families and communities out of despair and hopelessness, and giving each woman a sense of pride and self-worth and self-determination. I'm thrilled to be joining uh, some of our parishioners at one of the locations, one of the six co-op locations of the Honduras Threads. It's a significant ministry of sustainable community and vocational advancement. Um, a number of years ago, our parishioners helped these communities and through the Diocese of Honduras start these co-op ministries, which enables women uh, to take their skills and to put them into fine art and to sell them worldwide. She, she feels it's difficult. And she feels it's difficult for different reasons. They are far from the main city. They do not have transportation. They do not have plenty of water. And she is very grateful with the help that Honduras Threads gives her because she has access for this, uh, to this job. There's many other people that doesn't. So she feels that the situation is really complicated here and she is very grateful with Andrus Threads for the opportunity and for working here. One of the, <laughs> there so many different things to pick out, but it was phenomenal watching the ladies, first time they'd ever seen internet, to go online to the St. Michael website and see the service and see us worshiping in our own environment at church and to feel that that shared oneness with them and they also were uh, so taken back when they could go online and see their products on a website that people in China could see people in Europe could see and they would point out oh I made that one I made that one and to, to know that their products are, are going out to the world was uh, they were at all. The desires of my heart are many, but the most important ones have to do with my children. I want them to be to have more than what I have. I want them to be better than what I am. In the process of, of us providing for him the needs that he has, he has developed this interest. And he tells me, Mom, now I want to study. I didn't want to study before, but now I do. So, uh, and, and this is all thanks to the job that Honduras Threats is doing. And he wants to study and be someone. He's a first grader. He says that he has 10, 10 classmates. He took take classes like math. Uh, he takes grammar, PE. ¿Qué qué clases te gustan? Matemática, español y ciencias. She loves science, math, and Spanish class. Uh, and what would she like to do when she's an adult? ¿Qué te gustaría hacer cuando esté grande? <laughs> She wanna be a lawyer. ¿Qué te gusta comer? comer de todo. She loves food in general. She likes food in general? Yeah. And what's her favorite? Pero así tu favorita. ¿Lo que más te gusta comer? She likes Chinese food. 
she will be high school next year. We have uh, probably 20% of illiteracy. Uh, 60,000 60, people is all the people that we have studying in colleges. And the population is 8.5 million. So there is not very many people that is receiving the opportunity to get to study. So the places that we have visited and many, many other places in the country, they do not have the, the opportunity to receive a good education. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. It always amazes me when I'm on a mission trip um, how much we're all one, how we all, no matter whether we're from North America, or South America, or Asia, wherever, have uh, similar wants, needs, desires. The community, the one community, and the interconnectivity is, is incredible. It all started with um, a mission trip to Santa Cruz Arriba, uh, where the, the first year we did uh, construction on the church to expand it. They said, okay, we want you to help us make the church bigger, add on to the church. And they had pushed the whole thing back, so the whole thing was like brand new. All of this was, was dug out. We did all this, we sort of by shovels. We had a lot of guys who just had shovels and wheelbarrows and they dug all this out. Um, but also in those first four years, um, these two classrooms, the yellow and the blue, were added on and that structure there was finished out. And what we discovered that year was desperately needed in in Santa Cruz Arriba, where, well, there were two things. One was a good source of water, um, cleaner water and more of it. And then the other thing was work for the women in their own community. So something that they could do to earn money that was did not require them to come into Tegucigalpa for uh, six days a week, be away from their their families, if they were young, to be away from their parents, if they were older and had children of their own, to be away from their own children. There was a discussion among some folks that they wanted to do mission outreach um, in a different sort of way. And uh, so we hatched this idea um, to come work with these women to try to help them grow their business. This is where you say you choose. I started doing uh, mission work several years ago when I realized I had something that I could give back and I could offer to someone else that could maybe be of use. Here in, um, in Tegucigalpa and the area around this, when we go into the villages, we're teaching Excel and we're teaching them the computers. I mean, that's a whole different set of skills altogether. What did you learn today? Well, I learned many things, and one of the things that I learned was how to use a computer, and I had never used one before. I feel wonderful. I think that I am someone important. I think that uh, I am useful and that we help each other. Commit to the Lord, whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. It's about touching other people and helping and also being touched deep in your heart. It's just the most emotionally rewarding experience I think I have in life. Against my expectations as we were driving down some rural roads and seeing homes, um, that were far um, below standards that we live in. Out of these front doors came women who were extremely well-groomed in their best clothes, colorful, 
most of them wearing big earrings, um, a lot of glitter, they like sequins on their clothes, they like to feel sparkly, and their personalities are sparkly. They, they glow from the inside out and wear their joy um, on their sleeves, on their clothes, and in their faces. This community is basically a farmer community. In here, uh, we plant mostly all kinds of gardens. Um, Honduras Threads has helped a lot in this community, uh, especially uh, the girls in Honduras Threads, because they can help their family buy fertilizers or, or buy seeds with the money they earn. We are in Santa Cruz Abajo, where we are going to meet today at the home of Sylvia, who is the vice president of the Divina Luz Co-op. So Excel is just another program. Así que así como esos dos otros, Excel es otro programa. Excel helps us with numbers. Excel nos ayuda con los números. It's the joy in seeing God's work take place and feeling like I'm just maybe a little part of that in this world. It's also um, where I feel like I've really grown as a Christian, being out in the field and, and where you realize that people may live different lives and different lifestyles and different places and different economic situations, but we are all God's children. We all have so many of the same values and and so many of the same joys and sorrows. It really makes you understand God's work right here in the world. Well, this, uh, this project of Honduras Threads has helped me personally in many ways. At the beginning, we were scared even to talk, but now we talk and share and uh, and uh, we learn from each other. And that is a wonderful experience that is helping me uh, grow a as a person. <laughs> well, I'd like to get married, she says. We can work on that for you. Podemos ayudarle con eso, dice. Also, uh, in fact, um, probably the more interesting human interest story is the two young people, a 22-year-old and 20-year-old, that have been with us every day. They're both so special. They're both absolutely wonderful children. Carlos and Sarah are young people who have hopes for themselves in a country that uh, has not, in the past, created much opportunity for young people. I think they're still hearing their stories. There are many challenges in the country. Uh, in terms of opportunities for them to grow into the kind of people that they are more than capable of growing into. But their connection is um, through the first church that we went to. Their father was the pastor there over 10 years ago and he was killed in an automobile accident. And so for Carlos, who was 10 years old when his father died, that was the first time for him to go back into that parish and to be in that area. And it was a real moving experience for him. That was the first church my dad was in. And he started building it. It was a little, little church when we started. I was like five years old when he started that project. And I, I've grown with it. All the people over there know me because what my father did over there. And now seeing them, and now I can't, feel that I can help, that I can show them at least what I know about computers. It feels good by myself and I know my dad's proud. They're the kinds of kids that you would wish would be a part of any family that you had. You'd want to bring them up and bring them home yourself, but there's no need to do that. They are proud of their country. They want to contribute to their country. Um, their country needs them. I know I could do better. I could help more. I could help more people. I, I really want to help more people. This week showed me I, I really want to teach. 
and any way that we can offer support to growing the next generation of young people to contribute in their own land is, is really an incredible gift to them and to us. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So much of our culture is built on receiving for ourselves. These projects are built on gospel opposites, and that is that it's a blessing to give, uh, to give of ourselves and our resources, our talents, our time away to those who need us. And in giving, of course, we are doubly blessed. It's also built on abundance. That is, God has given us enough to have sustainable communities uh, and we don't have to just try to get for ourselves. We can give out of God's abundance our love, our money, our time, our talent to build uh, these kinds of communities, enabling women here in Honduras in the third world to have a significant vocational life, bringing in extra resources so that their lives can be improved and transformed. Spiritually, Honduras Threads has helped me a lot because uh, every time we come here, we are in communion and, uh, and it feels good. Click on set. And I think that with faith in God and with the job, uh, we, can, we can make it and we can go out of these difficult circumstances in which we are. Uh, we pay tithing. And that's why I think that God is blessing us. Well, this is uh, the second trip where we brought a small mission team to work on business skills. Last year, we worked on teaching them how to um, identify fiber content in some of the donated fabrics that we have. And then this year, we are working on the, introducing them for the first time to computers. But we're starting real slowly. <laughs> we want to help you think about the kind of what we call the big picture. Our parishioners are having uh, literally uh, cot cottage um, educational classes. It's an exciting thing to behold. We have a special situation because there is a man who is a oil man from Texas. He's very wealthy and he wants to buy some of your pillows. So we're going to invite him to come to our meeting and we're going to hear what he has to say and then we're going to make decisions about whether we should do business with him or not. Oh, good timing. Look, Bob's already here. Hola, Bob. Come in, come in. Buenas tardes. We've been thinking about you. And we're very appreciative of you coming all the way out here to see us and make us an offer. Yes. But we have a lot of material, we have a lot of costs, we have a lot of labor, we have very unique products, and so we're going to tell you what we can sell to you for. For example, for the Cruz Dominicana, you offered $25, yes. but we really need somewhere between $35 and $40. See, and we think we might, might be able to be able, go up a little bit. Yeah, but uh, there's some conditions, you know. Uh, for the, for the uh, pillow cruises. For the diseño de las cruces. If, if I buy 100 pillows, si yo les 100 and my offer would be $33. Mi es que yo les puedo pagar $33. If I buy 50 pillows, then I will offer you $38. So consider that among your colleagues and your associates, and I'll be back and you can let me know whether you receive my offer. I felt very good because it was a very good counteroffer and uh, I know that we would be able to do it. So for exclusive we want him to buy at the lower price of 32 but we want him to buy 150. The proposal to me is that I have to buy 50 more pillows, right. is that correct? But a lower price. But ask, ask everybody, I'm right. not sure that they agree with us. Right. You think it's okay? See? What about Rosa? Senor. Oh, bueno, bueno. <laughs> All right.
give a man a fish and feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and feed him for a lifetime. So part of the solution, it's very difficult for, uh, uh, for a small group of people to make a big change, but small changes of many people will make a significant difference. Thank you very much to the people there in the Church of St. Michael. Even though when I don't know you, I say thanks. I love the partnership of being able to share the good things that we can bring to them, but they sure share good things to take home with. I want to tell them that Honduras Threads has been very important in our lives. I found new friends. I feel better with myself. I found something I like, and it's helping. I want to give thanks first to the Lord and then to all the rest of the people that is helping us because they are helping us achieve our dreams. And thanks to that support, we are moving forward. Everyone can do something there, and, and you, you can feel so fulfilled in making a difference and feeling a part of something that really um, brings our worlds together. At St. Michael's, we have an, a wonderful array of mission and ministry. And we've said many times over, there is a place for you, there's a place for me, there's a place for us in mission and ministry. Whether we're um, at home, uh, down Douglas Avenue, around Dallas and South Dallas, or many other places in our country and overseas, uh, here in Honduras where I'm speaking to you, uh, there is a place for you where you can give of your gifts and talents and time to make a real difference in the lives of other people.